When the Buddha teaches about fabrication, he's pointing to the extent to which our intentions shape our experience. This is a lesson you learn as you're meditating. You make up your mind to stay with the breath, to breathe comfortably, and then to stick with that intention. And you begin to notice that you begin to give rise to feelings of pleasure, a sense of ease in the body, ease in the mind. All because you made up your mind to focus on a particular topic and to stick with it and to do it as skillfully as you can. Now, eventually we are trying to develop a sense of disenchantment with fabrications. In fact, one of the reasons why we practice with them is the more familiar we get with them, the more we realize their limitations. But we also realize that they have their potentials. After all, the path itself is fabricated. You can't do right view or right resolve or any of the factors down through right concentration without intention, without fabricating them. You've got to put them together. And you find that there are other benefits as well. You can use the process of fabrication to frame your day. They say that when John Munn would wake up in the morning, the first thing he would do would be to spread thoughts of goodwill. He actually had a chant that went through all ten directions, east, west, north, south, southeast, southwest, northwest, northeast, above and below, spreading goodwill to all the beings in all those directions. And then going on days when he wanted to chant the full thing, going through different types of beings. Now the chant is not necessary, but some people find it helpful. What's important is that you're fabricating the frame for the day. This is your intention for the day. This is how you're going to view the day. The Buddha would recommend every day thinking those five reflections that were subject to aging, illness, and death, separation, and there were heirs to our karma. It may sound like a depressing reflection, but it's not meant to be depressing. It's just meant to be sobering. You realize, what do you have in life? Lots of things that will separate from you. Your body itself is subject to aging, illness, and death. What do you have? You've got your karma. And this is to remind you what's important as you go through the day. Your actions are important, and the reflections on goodwill are to remind you that you want to act in a way that doesn't harm anybody, yourself or anyone else. In other words, you don't break the precepts, and you don't get anybody else to break the precepts either. And that's your real wealth. There's another passage where the Buddha talks about the wealth of the world. He talks about five kinds. There's the well-being that comes from having relatives, the well-being that comes from having material wealth. It comes from having good health. And then there's the well-being that comes from having right view and virtue. And as he said, the first three are not nearly as important as the last two. If you suffer loss in terms of any of the first three, that should be considered a small loss. Now, for a lot of us, that's hard to think about, losing our wealth, losing our relatives, losing our health. But it's going to happen. What doesn't have to happen is loss of right view or loss of your virtue. So remind yourself of what's important as you go through the day. All of this is verbal fabrication and mental fabrication. Verbal fabrication is directed thought and evaluation. In other words, you focus on certain topics and you think about them, ask questions, make comments. So when you're spreading thoughts of goodwill, you're taking goodwill as your, as your topic, that's your directed thought, and then evaluating it, trying to figure out ways in which you can extend goodwill to everybody. And it's good not to think that this is just a big sandwich spread that you spread over the world without taking any 
account for individual people. There will be people out there, and if you encounter them in the course of the day, it's going to be hard to maintain thoughts of goodwill. And so you've got to talk to yourself. How are you going to maintain goodwill to, with difficult people? You can think of some specific examples and then walk your way through the situation. What does it mean to have goodwill for that person? It means that you want to act in a way that's not harmful to that person's genuine well-being. And if possible, actually helpful. Wishing that that person would understand the causes for true happiness and act on them. You have to realize to some people that you can actually help in that direction. There are others you can't. This is why equanimity is also one of the topics of the Brahma Viharas. Learning how not to get worked up about things you can't change. This is another good theme to think about. As for perception, it's not perception as to which of your belongings or which of the various things you have in your life are valuable and which ones are not. You've got to hold those perceptions in mind. So whatever happens, you're not going to lose your virtue. And, you, and if there's anything you have to sacrifice in order to maintain your virtue, any wealth or status, any of the ordinary things of the world, remind yourself okay, you're willing to let go, because that's not where your true wealth lies. You're going to lose it anyhow at some point. But as I said, virtue and right view don't have to be lost. It's like a woman I knew one time in Thailand. She was having dreams of a spirit coming to her and insisting that it wanted to use her as a medium. And even in the dream, she was adamant that she did not want it to happen. The spirit threatened her, says, your mother's going to die, your father's going to die if you don't give in. And again, even in her dream, she was able to say, well, they're going to die anyhow. I don't want this miserable life of being somebody's medium. That's the right way to think. You don't want to sacrifice your virtue for anything, because things that we'd ordinarily would sacrifice our virtue for are going to go away anyhow, at one point or another. You hold on to your virtue, you hold on to your right view as your possession, because it's through virtue and right view that you can develop mindfulness, and through mindfulness the rest of the path. So these are some of the reflections with which you want to start the day. They also say that it's on Mun at the end of the day, but again, spread thoughts of goodwill. This is both for the sake of all the beings of the world, and all for the sake of his rest at night. We sometimes forget that the way we meditate, the way we prepare our mind for sleep, can have a huge impact on how the sleep goes and how our health goes in the sleep. A lot of people, to prepare for sleep, they brush their teeth and whatever. A meditator's way of preparing for sleep, in addition to all that, is to prepare the mind, again, through thoughts of goodwill. And then working with the breath. Staying with comfortable breath, staying with a breath that feels nourishing throughout the body. And if it turns out that by focusing on the breath you're keeping yourself awake a little bit longer, that's perfectly fine, because the rest that comes from concentration, especially when the breath is comfortable, can often be a lot more refreshing than the rest that comes from plain old sleep. By thinking thoughts of goodwill, working with the breath. You're putting the mind in a much better frame. As the Buddha says, if you think thoughts of goodwill on a regular basis, you find it easy to sleep, easy to wake up, and you dream no evil dreams. Now, Some people have found that, especially when they come to the monastery for the first couple of days, there's some pretty wild dreams. 
that's largely because when you're out there in the regular world, there's so many things pressing in on you all the time that currents that lie deep in the mind just stay pressed down. And then when all of a sudden those outside currents are not there, things inside come springing up. Well, that lasts just for a couple of days, and then things sort themselves out. And then you'll find that this practice of focusing on goodwill, the practice of then staying with the breath. If you want, you can repeat the word Bhutto to remind yourself of the Buddha. This helps the quality of your sleep. Now again, if you find that you're not sleeping or having trouble falling asleep, don't think of it as trouble. Just think of here's an opportunity to stay with the breath. Keep your mind as still as possible. And there's nothing to worry about whether you're going to fall asleep or not. So the way you fabricate your day is a really important part of the practice. Try to create this framework when you get up, when you go to sleep. This is where you can use those teachings on fabrication. Bodily fabrication, the breath. Verbal fabrication, directed thought and evaluation. Mental fabrication, perceptions and feelings. You can shape the day. You shape your waking hours, shape your sleeping hours. in a way that's conducive to your general well-being.